Welcome to CS101, Scientific Python, Lecture 16, on two-dimensional arrays or matrices. In the past, we introduced the NumPy array type to store vectors or one-dimensional collections of data. We're now interested in moving up to multiple dimensions of data. We're primarily going to focus on two-dimensional arrays, which will look like tables or matrices, rather than three-dimensional or higher constructs, which would represent tensors or other ways of, of storing data. We're also interested in solving basic systems of equations using matrix vector multiplication and matrix matrix solution methods that have been developed over many years. We're going to call our 2D arrays matrices to distinguish them from other dimensionalities of arrays. Similar to how we had to import NumPy to use our earlier work, we would create a vector by saying something like vector equals np.array, and then we would pass it a list or a tuple of information. In this case, list 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we could query certain things that were automatically determined by NumPy when we created this. For instance, the vector has a shape. It's a tuple, a five long. A vector has a, the length would also return that. A vector has a d-type or the data type of the values that are inside of it. If you'll recall, the main ones that we were interested in were float64, which corresponded to a typical float in Python, and an int64, which corresponds to a typical int in Python. Although there are a dozen or more different D types available. Remember that D type refers to the inner data type of the array, as opposed to the outer type, which is simply a numpy.nd array. If we want to create a matrix, Inside of this np.array operation, we have to pass in a list of lists or a tuple of tuples. So for instance, we could say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for the first row. The second row would be represented by the elements in the second line here. And when we're done, we would close that out. We can now ask Python to display this to us, and it shows us a two-row, five-column matrix. Now, while we can create things directly from lists of lists and tuples of tuples, it's also convenient for us to be able to create things directly. We're going to use things that are called convenience functions to do this. For instance, NumPy can do np.zeros, and you can pass it a tuple containing values such as 5 times 5, which creates a 5 by 5 matrix of zeros. Similarly, there's an np.ones, I'll create it with a 4x4 four four matrix here. And there's also np.i, E-Y-E, -E, which stands for an identity matrix of a given dimensionality. Now you'll notice, so an identity matrix has ones down the diagonal. You'll notice that I'm giving it a single value because it's expecting it to be square. If I give it something different, for instance 5x6, it just throws me a type error. If I give it two values, it attempts to coerce whatever shape I give it, in this case five rows and six columns, to uh, be restrained to the same basic form as an identity matrix. So I, E, Y, E behaves a little bit differently than ones and zeros in creating these. If we want to access something inside of a matrix, let me go back to matrix, which is what we had here. If I index in with one value, in this case zero, this is going to select out for me a particular row. So of course matrix index one would return to me the other row. If I want to grab a particular element, I have a couple of ways of doing this. One is that I can grab a row and then I can grab the corresponding element, in this case the zero with row the threeth element returns to me value four. Or I can write this a little bit more concisely with tuple indexing, which lets me say matrix index 0, 3. So this isn't available with lists and other things in Python or lists of lists. This is only available in NumPy, but it's very convenient when you're trying to grab out particular bits of information inside of an array. We can also slice. So for instance, if I use a colon as one of my indices, and then a 0 as the other one, this is going to select all of the rows and the zeroth column. In this case, it gives me back a 1 and a 6 corresponding to that first column there. If I wanted to grab 5 and 10, which would I use? 
I did colon comma negative one, it would pull out those last two elements for me. Now furthermore, I can import data and do things like plot it or manipulate it in other ways. I'm going to go ahead and import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT so that I have this available for any subsequent plotting that I want to do. I'm going to load a particular data set. In this case, I'm going to use numpy.loadText, which loads something that has been saved previously as a text file, for instance, a CSV file, which we've encountered before. There's an inflammation.csv, which I've made available to you. And you should load it using delimiter equals comma, because it is a comma-separated value file. Once that's loaded, we can ask things like, what is the data.shape? It has 60 rows and 40 columns. I can examine a subset of it. So for instance, I could grab the first 10 rows and the first five columns and take a look at the kinds of values that are in there. You'll notice that these are some kind of float values, but it looks like the actual quantities are tend to be integers. That may not be universally true, but it seems to be broadly true here. Um, I might infer that they are all non-negative, for instance, as well. Let's check data.dtype. We'll see float64, unsurprising. Now, if I want to plot this, I also had previously looked at mshow for plotting lists of lists, but I can use this as well with data. So in this case, I get this matplotlib image. It has a number of values. These are, these are color-coded from dark blue for low values up to bright yellow for high values. So mshow is a good way of visualizing a two-dimensional array of data, whether you're thinking of it as a matrix or as a data table or whatever you have. There are other values available to you, for instance, converting these back into lists or tuples. Uh, furthermore, all of the things that we know about before, like dtype, can be specified as well. Uh, the same with these kinds of two-dimensional arrays as we could with one-dimensional arrays.